Thank you for staying with us. A chieftain of the All Progressive Congress in Niger State, Jonathan Vatsa, has demanded the resignation of the Senate President Godswill Akwabiu for allegedly taunting hunger protesters to go ahead with the protest. We shall be eaten, in his words. Vatsa said it is a huge error and a disservice to the country to turn around and make someone like Akwabiu a Senate President in the APC government. And that is why this government can never get it right. Now, joining us today is Sam. Samson Ajibade is a criminologist and a security researcher. Good morning, Samson. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. All right, so um, the Senate President, Godzilla Pabio, made a statement when, uh, you know, the protest was going to go on. And he said, you know, you guys go ahead and protest, we will be eaten. And that is something that has been said a lot, you know, with our government. They don't care about the people as much as long as for them, their own stomach infrastructure is okay. But uh, I want to ask, what is the role of, you know, statements like this? Um, when, uh, when people who are supposed to be the leaders make such statements, what is the role of this? And how does it just translate into how people react? So especially with the protests now going ahead. Okay. Good morning. Good the thing morning. is, I, Nigerians should expect a statement, this kind of statement from the kind of characters they elect. Hmm. It shouldn't be, be surprising. And uh, Akwabiu, Senator Akwabiu, has a history of that. He makes a statement recklessly and afterwards he apologizes. And Nigerians move on, probably because Nigerians forget so easily. And when their leaders make an infuriating, illogical statement, they, after a few years, they still come to them with, with cups of rice and they still sing their praises and they elect them again. This Nigerians should expect this kind of statement from the characters they elect. So, like uh, uh, in, in physics, uh, technical drawings, they would say you should, uh, okay, let me just paraphrase it like this. It's some of our leaders, some of our political office holders, they open their mouths to any convenient radios and spook gibberish on Nigerians, on those who elect them, because they know that they never got there with their personality. They got there through resources, uh, monies, and all that. The reason they could open their mouth to any convenient radios and they know that Nigerians forgetting so easily. That is it. Mm. Afterwards now, in a few years' time, maybe probably in two, three years' time, Nigeria will begin to, to sing accolades or shower accolades on him again, all because of gains from Senator Akwabi. They would have forgotten the insults and all. That is it. And when I, when I got to this topic, I, I said to myself, I think this, uh, the topic should even be reframed as, who is, who is Akwabi? Like, so there will, there will be, a, like, an analysis of Aquabio's personality. So mm -hmm. that is it. Yeah, but um, Aquabio doesn't seem to be the only culprit that is talking, um, permit the word, carelessly. Uh, we've heard him, anyway, make a, a, so many statements. Like you said, he comes back to apologize. He apologized to a, a colleague that he was saying uh, mm -hmm. should not talk because they are not in the club. He was talking about uh, yeah, exactly. um, another time that he was saying he was uh, going to give uh, every senator two million to enjoy themselves mm -hmm. while Nigerians are suffering. Mm -hmm. And then now he will be, they will be eating while people will be on the streets and all that. But we've seen uh, governors yeah, make some careless statements as well. Even the president is not vindicated. He's, he's not out of the woods as well. He also makes some statements that that Nigerians come out to say it's not good. Even now, we've seen that he has given Nigerians another broadcast that was uh, was sent uh, to the Nigerian pop public. That was yesterday or so. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, trying to to correct some of the the things that he said in the previous address that didn't go down well with the people and all that. So, would like to just know. Um, uh, maybe they've they've never thought about it, but what? What is the role, like Rume asked, we are just rephrasing it, what yeah. is the role that comments like this uh, play when it comes to protest? Because maybe the protest was supposed to be peaceful and comments like this made them, made them worse, or maybe the protest would have, yeah. been, would have been good, 
uh, would have been bad, but pro comments like this make them better and all that. So what are, how, how much can spoken words go to either infuriate the people or douse the tension? It could, like you said, it could infuriate the people, the nation, or even douse the tension on the other hand. Why three weeks, they gave a three week uh, notice and Nigerians were preparing, some were making statements and all. But we in the media, we did a great job. What job did we do? We helped the government douse the tension. So statements, the way you approach matters could affect people's emotions, could affect the way they think and the way they react. So as a leader, a political office holder, you need to be logical enough to know when to make a statement, how to make a statement, and through which of the channels you should make your statement. But in this part of the world, in this part of the world where things, statements do not, do not really matter, that's why I said, you said the impact, the impact. It would have made a huge impact. It would have infiltrated the masses. In fact, many would have even forgotten the head, head bad uh, governance protest. They would have even held him to say, okay, this man must resign. It would have just, just gone to a Fabio must resign, forgetting the head, head bad governance uh, protest. It could have infuriated even the masses, even those who never wanted to join, even those in his party who, who still feel, okay, let us bear it. But because of that statement, it could cause a lot of things. It could cause uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, of the nation to be upside down. But because this society that we have, we are everyone. I see some of our electorates as prospective, uh, I don't want to use the word thieves. They are just waiting to also loot. They are also waiting to get their own share. Okay, they, some of them would even say that, okay, don't worry, leave Akwabi, we'll wait for him. In three years' time, I will, will be back to beggars. And at, at that time, what are we going to do? They are not going to hold him accountable. They are all, only going to demand money from him. The reason that Fabio could make reckless statements like uh, we are going to... Uh, that was in 2013. He said we need to put uh, food in the, in the stomachs of, uh, of state chairmen so that they don't, they don't stray to other parties. I'm going to give all the state chairmen of the parties, one million naira right now. <laughs> Isn't that the meaning? That tells you, even those who represent us, those who should be our, who should speak for us, even before our leaders, before our political office leaders, they just go there for just for pecuniary gains. That is all. They know when they get there, they they are just going there to get more to get some money. The reason our, our leaders, our political office leaders, could just open their mouths to any convenient radius. They just feel, okay, as much as I'm convenient, nothing is going to happen, let's go on. They just say it, because nothing would happen. We, are, we, as, we have not uh, forgotten the one of the, uh, uh, Senator Akoti, Natasha Akoti, mm. where she said to the Senator that we are not in a nightclub. How would you address a married woman, a human like that? on a live broadcast. So this, this is the thing, but our leaders do not care because of monetary gains and only, and also the consciousness of the people is very low. The most conscious people who wouldn't sway, who wouldn't collect uh, money from our leaders are just very few and their voices are not so loud. When Nigerians are ready, they begin to hold them accountable. In fact, their children begin to, uh, to, uh, to, to question them. Daddy, I read this in the news. What was your opinion then? What did you say? Like you said, the impact of this. It would, but because of the crime we have, we are all after Pekuna begins. Okay, so let's, let's um, veer back to Jonathan Vatsa. Um, he has called for the senator to, you know, put in his resignation. I know that in other countries, in a Senate climb, something like this, you would definitely expect that person who is in power to put in their resignation, especially if they are taunting you with um, something like hunger. So do you think that what Vatsa is asking for right now, asking for resignation or even an apology from the Senate president, do you think that should be viable at this point? It should be viable. Yes, yes. This uh, ah, what's this? This lady's uh, this lady's name, the former UK Prime Minister, the one that came before before Rishi Sunak. Uh, ah, I forgot his name. Uh, uh, her name. Sorry. The the one of the reasons she she resigned her position was 
probably because uh, of a statement, or even during the, during the campaign. They raised the statement she made during a, uh, she was, she was a youth then, and she made a particular statement, which was against the crown. Or the, the monarch. Uh, you mean uh, the, Theresa the monarch, May? The monarch. Yes, exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Theresa May, Theresa. Okay, let's. I, I, I will try. I will try to call to call her name. So, one of the reasons she resigned was because of that of that statement. What this senator is saying that he should resign. We, even in a senate climb, this is where I'm going. In a senate climb, no one should even tell Akwabio to resign be, before he does because he knows that it could affect his future political ambition or other political ambitions. So, what he's saying would be viable. If Nigerians were conscious enough, if other senators were conscious enough, the other senators would just sit and say, okay, I'll just leave him. Yeah, he's in the opposition, he's this, he's, they would play politics around it. And that will be gone. But in the Senate climb, he shouldn't even call. People should not even, he should be the one to resign. When the media is against one statement in other climb, the public office holders will certainly automatically step aside. That is it. But what he's saying, mm -hmm. Akpabio, if there should be a campaign, if Nigerians were conscious enough, there should be a campaign that Akpabio should resign. Okay, so at this That's point, how do, we, how do we hold our leaders accountable, especially for the statements that they make? Aside the things that they do, how do we start to hold them accountable? The people who have that reasoning, how do they come and amplify their voices? How do we hold our, our leaders accountable and even those, those that have the voices? The media is there. But one thing, the media in this nation, the media has been got. We talk about, we talk about this almost every time. Many of these things will be discussed one-off. If you look at foreign, foreign media stations, like this Aquabio say, say something now, this topic now, it will be discussed throughout the whole day. In fact, throughout the whole week. The next program after this will discuss it. That is how much more big media organizations like CNN, BBC, that is how they do, Al Jazeera, that is how they do. But in Nigeria here, we just discuss this one off and that will be gone. The media has a role. According to the Constitution Empires Us, Chapter 2, Section 22, we should hold them accountable. That is it. The media should not just hold the public office so that's accountable. Even the citizens should be held accountable by the media. So the media is a veritable tool here. We should amplify it. We should keep discussing it. We should, as we keep discussing it, we keep enlightening the people and we increase the consciousness of the people. I've always emphasized the consciousness of the people. When the consciousness of the people is, is increased, you, the, the media will even do a much more lesser job. That is it. And those who have the, the, the voices, but their voices are not being heard. The media, please, should give them a voice. The media okay. should give them a voice. But okay. because of where we are, the media has been gagged. You will say, okay, because this person belongs to other party, because this person's uh, opinion could be against this present government, I don't think we should bring him here. The media, the media, I say the media. The media is a veritable tool here. That okay, is. Samson. Um uh, we've heard you loud and clear. Uh, let me ask you this. As a criminologist and a researcher yeah. in security matters, um, uh, what lessons have we learned or can we learn as a nation from this uh, protest that just happened? Uh, because in, in so many places, it is no longer happening for various reasons. So what lessons uh, can we learn from here so that we will either avoid what happened in this protest uh, or we can manage it better? Uh, the next time. Okay, that's a very good one. And I remember the last time I was here, uh, I talked about, I referenced the answers that probably the, the police then didn't learn so much about civility or crowd management. And I said that by this time, the, the police would have learned. Look, using uh, Lagos as a case study, yes, the Lagos police command was to some extent simple enough. They have learned crowd control, and even probably anger management. That is it. And also, when it comes to security, I've always emphasized on community-oriented policing. Uh, weeks ago, I was with the, uh, the SSA, the Lagos State Government, on, uh, on youth mobilization and all like that. And I asked him, I said, what measures have you put in place? He said to me that they've gone into communities, into local areas, into interlands, 
to engage with CDCs, CDAs, and even local youth organizations. Did you not see the impact in, uh, in Lagos here during the protest? This is one of the things we should learn, and even other states should emulate. Community engagement, community-oriented policing, community approach towards crime control. We need to localize security. We need to localize uh, the, the police formation. Again, what lessons have we learned? We have also learned that when the people are angry, so when the people are hungry, they will be angry. And that could lead to crime. People have said that there is no correlation between a, between a, a economic uh, theory or uh, food scarcity and all and, and crime like that. But I tell you, when the people are hungry, not everyone has that, that psychological control. We call it the eat and the ego and even the superego in, uh, in psychology. Not everyone will say, okay, let me go and work or let me, let me hope that things will get better. Others will just take to crime. When the people are hungry, they would take to crime. And we saw looting in some other states of the Federation. When people say they want to protest, put sociological approach first. Don't put military action first. Don't begin to man police officers at different points. Go and engage with them. Know their plights. Give them what they want. People have been complaining basically about food. It tells you that the, uh, the economy has, uh, could dictate the security of a nation. Thank you. Samson, thank you for coming and sharing your valuable contributions this morning. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm speaking with Samson Ajibade. He is a criminologist and a security researcher. And we've just been looking at the statement made by the Senate president saying they will be eaten, we can go out to protest. And one of the APC chieftain, Jonathan Vatsa, has called for his resignation and to tender an apology to Nigerians. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show this morning. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with us. And happy birthday once again to my father, Bishop Paulson Oje. Happy birthday. And thank you for watching and staying with us on the breakfast. My name is Rume Paulson. And I am Nyamgu Agadi. See you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.